Hey Algebra 1 and thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be looking at how to graph for text form um, and we're going to be looking for three things to write in our notes for lesson 8.4. You will need some graph paper for notes. In fact, the, the maximum you need will maybe be a half a page of graph paper. So make sure you have that ready to, and let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to see are just some reviews. So anytime H is bigger than zero, it's going to translate to the right, and anytime h is less than zero, it's going to translate to the left. Um, anytime you always want to find the axis of symmetry, it's always going to be whatever x is equal to or what h is equal to. That was what we learned in the previous lessons. We also reviewed, or also learned vertex form as well, where k is going to increase or decrease the graph going up or down. Um, and then you also have a essentially changing the graph as well, whether that is going to be a stretch or a shrink. New things we're going to write down now are these four steps. And this is how we can graph using vertex form. The first thing we're going to do is identify the vertex and the axis of symmetry. Just remember the vertex is hk and the axis of symmetry is where x is equal to h. Step two, you would choose two other x values from different distances of the vertex and substitute into the equation to find what y would be equal to. This is essentially what we did um, many chapters ago where we made an x and y table and then plotted points. So that's all that, that we're doing there. And then once you're done, you're going to plot the points and reflect them across the axis of symmetry. So you'd have a total of five ordered pairs. And then finally, step four would just be drawing a smooth line to connect all the points to make your parabola. So just remember your um, quadratic equations would be kind of like bowl-shaped or U-shaped depending on the stretch or the shrink as well. Let's go ahead and pause here so you can write down our four steps. And once you're done, click play to see how it's done. All right, so here's an example of what you would see. It says describe and then graph g of x is equal to 1 half times x minus 4 to the second. Compare the graph of f of x is equal to x squared. What we're going to see here is um, we're going to actually see it translated to the right 4 because h is equal to 4. And then the half is going to shrink which would make it twice as wide as the parent graph. And that's all there is. There's no k there, so it's not going to go up or down. So we're just moving to the right for, and then having it shrink. So now what I'm going to do is have my x and y table. First thing I want to make sure I realize is the vertex, which we should know how to find already. The vertex is going to be 4, because that's h, and then comma k, which would be 0. So the vertex is 4, comma, 0, and the axis of symmetry is 4. So now that I'm ready, I'm going to go ahead and plot my vertex over 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So here's my vertex, and that's also going to be in my axis of symmetry. And I'm going to write that just right in the middle of my x and y table. And then I'm going to just choose two other points to put in my x and y table. I'm going to maybe say x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 2 just because I have to multiply by 1 half when I plug it in. So this is what that's going to look like. I'm going to do it in a different color here. I'm going to take my function or my my parent fun, my vertex form and plug in 0 and then plug in 2 to solve for y. So I'm going to have 1 half parentheses 0 minus 4 squared. That is 1 half times negative 4 squared or 1 half times 16, which is 8. So when I have x is 0, y would be 8. And then I'm going to do the same thing when I say x is equal to 2. I'm going to scoot that over here. 1 half, parentheses, 2 minus 4, because so I'm still using that original function, squared. 2 minus 4 is going to be negative 2. And negative 2 squared is 4. So a half of 4 is equal to 2. So when x is 2, y is 2. Now I'm going to go ahead and plot these points. So 0, 8, 
which would be here, and then 2 comma 2, over 2 up 2. So those are two points on the left side. Notice my axis of symmetry is right here where I plotted my vertex. So I'm essentially just going to have, I'm going to have um, reflections of those points. So this point is 1, 2 away from the axis of symmetry, so I keep going 1, 2 on the other side. And now it's symmetrical and reflection. My other point, the 0, 8, is 1, 2, 3, 4 away. So I keep going 1, 2, 3, 4 on the other side. So here are my five total points. And I'm just going to make a curved line as my step 4 and then be done. Okay? So that's all we're going to work on for this one. This is where you're going to need your half sheet of graph paper. So again, let's go ahead and try to find the vertex and the axis of symmetry. And then once you find those, go ahead and make your X and Y table. Using one, one point would be your vertex, and then two other points would be two different numbers, different distances away from the vertex. And then go ahead and plot those points. So I'm going to give you time to pause the video here, try it on your own, and once you're done, click play. All right, so for number two, my vertex is H comma K, which means my, that'll be negative 2 comma 3. So I'm going to go and plot that, negative 2 up 3. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and find my axis of symmetry, which is equal to my x, and that's going to be negative 2. Now, I didn't describe the graph, so let's go ahead and just talk about that really quickly. Noticing a is equal to a negative 2, so it's going to be 2 times as narrow um, as your parent graph, and it's going to be facing downward. You're going to be moving to the left 2, which is what we've already done with our vertex, and then scooting up 3, which is also, again, what we've done with our vertex. Now that I have those, I'm going to go ahead and find some points I can plot. I just used really easy numbers for this one. I used 1 for x, and then I used 0 for x. So let's see what happens when I plug both of those in. Negative 2, parentheses 1 plus 2, squared plus 3. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 squared is going to give me 9. So negative 2 plus times 9 is negative 18. And negative 18 plus 3 is negative 15. Okay. And then the next one, I have 0, com 0 as my x. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in again. So negative 2 parentheses 0 plus 2 squared plus 3. That's going to be negative 2 times 4 plus 3. That's negative 8 plus 3, which is 5, or negative 5. So this one will be interesting to plot that negative 15. So that one's going to go off the graph just a little bit. But I can go ahead and do 0, comma, negative 5. 1, 2, 5. And then my 1, comma, negative 15. This is negative 10. So negative 15 would be, like, way down here. Okay, which is fine. And then I just make my symmetrical point. So 0, comma, negative 5 is 1, 2 away from the vertex. So 1, 2 on the other side to reflect it. And then 1, comma, negative 15 is 1, 2, 3 away. So 1, 2, 3 away on the other side. And so I'm going to have my, my graph facing downward. 2 times is 0. Move to the left twice and up 3. The next piece, of thing, next, next piece of information we're going to do is what happens when we're just given some points and we want to write a quadratic function. It does say the vertex is 1, 2, and it passes through the, through the point 3, 10. So these are your x and your y values, similar to how we plugged in an x value before. And we already know the vertex represent, is represented by h, k. So what we can do here is use vertex form, which is, and plug in what's given to us. So, if I have h being 1, that means I'm going to see minus 1 where h is. k is 2, so that would be plus 2 on the outside. And then I'd plug in my x and my y values. x is equal to 3, so where the x is, I'm going to write a 3. And then y is 10, so I'm going to write a 10 where the y is. The only thing I don't know is a, so you're essentially going to solve for a and then rewrite your function using 
the vertex in A. So I'm going to do 3 minus 1 first, that is 2. So I have A times 2 plus 2 is equal to 10. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, so I get 8 is equal to 2A. So that means A is equal to 4. Now that I have my vertex in A, I can go ahead and rewrite my quadratic function. So that's going to be Y is equal to, or excuse me, F of X is equal to I just realized I messed up. I didn't put my squared up here with h minus x minus h. So technically, that's 2 times 2, which gives me 4a. So 2 is actually equal to a. So it's my fault. So now I have f of x is equal to 2, which is my a, parentheses, x minus 1, because there's my h, and then plus 2, which is my k. Squared, don't forget that, like I just did. Okay, so here's one you're going to try. Your vertex is negative 4, negative 2. Remember that's h comma k. And then passing through points, negative 7, 7, which is your x and y values. So let's go ahead and pause here to try number 3. And then once you're done, click play to see how it's worked out. All right, so the very first thing I'm going to do is write down my vertex form correctly this time. And then I'm going to plug in my values. I know y is equal to 7, don't know what a is, I know x is equal to negative 7, h is equal to negative 4, so if you have neg minus negative 4, that would be plus positive 4, and then squared, and then minus 2 for k. Now that I'm ready, I'm ready to go and solve for a, so negative 7 plus 4 is negative 3. So I have negative 3 squared, which is 9. So I'm going to write 9a. And I'm also going to add 2 to the other side. So I have 9 equals 9a, which means a is equal to 1. So now I can go ahead and plug those values in. f of x is equal to, I could put a 1 out here, but it's not going to change anything. So I'm going to go ahead and just rewrite x plus 4 squared minus 2. OK. So that's going to be the end of your notes for today. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time.